In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And so I welcome you this evening uh, here to this celebration of our Jesuit history. Uh, delighted to welcome brothers from the British province here to the East Coast province and uh, to come together to remember and to celebrate the lives of our Jesuit predecessors who, whose example and intercession is so crucial to us today. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Let us ask for pardon and peace. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, eternal God, who raised up among the peoples of England and Wales the holy martyrs Edmund Campion, Robert Southall, and their companions, and willed that they should be conformed to Christ, who died to redeem the world. Grant by their intercession that your people, strengthened by the same faith and love, may always rejoice in your gift of unity. This we pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, what more shall I say? I have not time to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who by faith conquered kingdoms, did what was righteous, obtained the promises. They clothed, closed the mouths of lions put out raging fires, escaped the devouring sword. Out of weakness they were made powerful, became strong in battle, and turned back foreign invaders. Women received back their dead through resurrection. Some were tortured and would not accept deliverance in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others endured mockery, scourging, even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, sawed in two, put to death at sword's point. They went about in skins of sheep or goats, needy, afflicted, tormented. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered about in deserts and on mountains, in caves and in crevices in the earth. Yet all these, though approved because of their faith, did not receive what had been promised. God had foreseen something better for us, so that without us they should not be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that lies before us, while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. For the sake of the joy that lay before him, Jesus endured the cross, despising its shame, and has taken his seat at the right of the throne of God. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, just as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them, in your name that you gave me, and I guarded them, and none of them was lost, except the son of destruction, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak this in the world, so that they may share my joy completely. I gave them your word, and the word, world hated them, because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world, and I consecrate myself for them, so that they may also be consecrated in the truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord.
as a British Jesuit and a, a member of Campion Hall in Oxford, the, the Jesuit postgraduate college in Oxford, it's a great joy for me to celebrate this mass of Edmund Campion here with my Jesuit brothers uh, here in New York and with St. Ignatius with the wider Jesuit Ignatian family. And the occasion for this is the bringing over of certain historical objects, relics, if you like, uh, over to New York. One of them is in the wonderful Tudor exhibition in the Met, uh, a wonderful cope made at the order of Henry VII. And if you haven't seen that exhibition yet, do take that opportunity. But just this evening, we'll also be showing some other um, precious objects from the collections of Stonyhurst College, Campion Hall from the Jesuits in Britain. And uh, we'll be hearing more about those after the Mass if you're able to join us. But it does raise this question, do these historical objects have anything to say to us today? Does, does indeed the story of Edmund Campion, Robert Southall, Nicholas Owen, and these other martyrs speak to us today of our Christian vocation and mission? Or are they just relics of a bygone age? Sometimes when I'm with young people, I feel like a bit of an old relic myself. Edmund Campion was an incredibly gifted young man at the University of Oxford. And uh, he was well known as the best orator in the university and people used to follow him as Campionists to try and imitate his rhetorical style. He was one of the best literary stylists of his day. And so it was natural that even at the young age of 26, in 1566, he was the one who was chosen for the momentous visit of none other than Queen Elizabeth I, the Virgin Queen, to the university. And so in her presence in the university church, he gave the oration before the Queen. And it was a masterpiece of diplomacy. He compared the Queen to the moon and the university to the seas. It was a very skillful way of flattering the queen, the monarch, whilst at the same time entering a plea for distant government. We can run things here in our own way, thank you very much. He became a favorite of the queen as he led three days of disputation in Latin in her presence. But there was more to Campion than a gifted scholar and orator. And he had to wrestle with his conscience whether he would take holy order, orders in the Anglican Church or embrace the Catholic faith of his youth. And eventually, to resolve this, he went to Ireland and then to the continent and became Catholic definitively and joined the Society of Jesus. Again, a glittering career awaited him in Prague as he was writing plays and performing them. But then he was given this mission, this dangerous mission back to England. And so for the second time in his life, he had to set aside the potential glories of a great career to choose something more, his service of the kingdom out of obedience to the mission. And his mission in England, which lasted little more than a year, was to console the Catholics who were under persecution, to encourage them to persevere. And I often think, what must it have been like to attend one of those masses that Campion celebrated in secret? People, when they heard he was around, used to come from the, the houses and the farms nearby and gather to hear one of those clandestine masses, to hear him preach. I think we get a sense of the power of his words from his famous brag. This was a document he dashed off in about half of an hour when he realized he was likely to be captured soon. 
He wrote it to explain his mission to the Privy Council, the very men who he knew were plotting to have him tortured and executed. And there's certainly a note of defiance in those words. We have made a league, he says, all the Jesuits in the world to cheerfully carry the cross that you shall lay upon us and never to despair of your recovery while we have a man left to enjoy your Tyburn, to endure the racks of your torments or to be consumed by your prisons. The enterprise has begun, the expense is reckoned it is of God, it cannot be withstood. So the faith was planted, so it must be restored. Defiant and powerful words, and those words all but sealed his fate. But it's also important to attend to the final paragraph of this amazing document. And if you'll indulge me just a little bit more, I'll recite some of those words. Because this is a man who's not just defying the counselors of the queen, but a man who has been formed by the gospel through the spiritual exercises of Saint Ignatius. And he doesn't end on a note of defense or aggression or warfare, but on a note of reconciliation. And he says to them, if these my offers shall be refused, and I, having run thousands of miles to do you good, shall be rewarded with rigor, then I have nothing left to say, except to commend my case and yours to Almighty God, the searcher of hearts, that he send us his grace and set us at accord before the day of payment to the end that at last we may be friends in heaven when all injuries shall be forgot. There I think you hear the core of Campion's mission so close to his heart, not one of conflict but of reconciliation. And not long afterwards, in a place in Oxfordshire called Lyford Grange, he was celebrating his final mass. We hear that everyone in the congregation were in tears, including the man who was about to betray him. And from there, he was arrested and taken to his fate. It's an extraordinary thing that in 1959, the roof was opened up at Lyford Grange, and inside they found an object wrapped in wool, an Agnus Dei, an image in wax of the Lamb of God. And it's almost certain that this was a possession of Edmund Campion that he had brought with him to console the Catholics. This Agnus Dei had been blessed by Gregory the Thirteenth, and it was uh, considered to be an object, a sacred object that could bring protection from fire, flood, and plague. And he had brought it, no doubt, to give comfort and consolation to the Catholics under their persecution. And so this found in 1959 um, is now under the stewardship of the British province and is here at St. Ignatius today and you can, you're welcome to come and see it after the Mass if you have a bit of time. But I think Campion's story, Campion's words, and this object all speak to us today. Yes, they are relics, if you like. They are remainders from a far distant age. But they remind us what truly remains of a life and pose that question to us. What do we ourselves want to leave behind as our own legacy? Because I think that what remains of Campion is what remains of all of us. 
What remains of us is love. With confidence in the never-failing mercy of our God, we offer God our prayers for ourselves, our church, and our world. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for his brother bishops, that they will work together to discern with the people of God where the Spirit is leading our church today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Society of Jesus, that it will continue to bear faithful witness to the truth of the gospel and be an instrument of the compassion and mercy of Jesus Christ to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who live in countries where they face hardship and persecution for their faithfulness to Christ, and his church, that our holy martyrs will intercede for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that we will work to overcome our differences so as to address the many critical issues confronting us today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, whether of mind or body, that they might find comfort and healing in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, in particular for Laurie Siegel, that they might enjoy the reward of their goodness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions each of us carry in our hearts today, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and merciful God, hear the prayers we offer to you as we offer them in the name of your Son and our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as we call to mind the sacrifice of the cross, we too may take up our cross and so be more fully united with Christ, to whom your glorious martyrs gave witness by their deaths. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyrs poured out like Christ to glorify your name shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble be so strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one body and Holy Spirit. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, with Edmund Campion, Robert Southall, Nicholas Owen, and their companions, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we have dominion, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and who reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My friends, may the peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be.
the body of Christ. 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 Let us pray. <clears throat> As we celebrate by this divine banquet the heavenly victory of the blessed martyrs Edmund Campion, Robert Southall, and their companions, we beseech you, O Lord, to bestow victory on those who eat here below the bread of life and to allow them to eat as victors from the tree of life in paradise. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father Hilbert. At the end of Mass, we are all invited to a reception at Regis High School. We ask you to enter the school on 85th Street 
at number 50 East 85th Street. There will be abundant uh, nibbles, hors d'oeuvres, and libations. And the curator of the Jesuit Holdings collections in England will be present with some of the treasures that of which Father Austin has spoken. So we're all invited to Regis uh, right after the Mass. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.